The artist I've spent most of my quarantine listening to is Bob Dylan, America's Shakespeare. You probably know him for songs like The Times They Are Changing or Everyone Must Get Stoned. If you don't know him, here's a picture of him. I've always intended to go through his 40 albums, and I certainly had time to do it in a pandemic. But when it comes to Bob Dylan in video games, old Robbie Zimmerman has only found his music used in Crackdown 2, Sean White Skateboarding, and one song in Rock Band 2. And that's about it. He had a CD-ROM release for the PC in the 90s. Yes, really. But even that didn't quench my thirst to warrant a full video. But with Dylan recently cashing in on a cosy pension by selling publishing rights to his songs, I'd expect use of his music in games to increase within the next decade. So I thought it'd be a good time to look back on games that have included references or easter eggs about Bob Dylan. Just to make things clear for those who may wonder, what's a reference? For example, in Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy game, the first episode is named Tangled Up in Blue, which is the opening track to the album Blood on the Tracks. This 1975 release is also an achievement in the game, as is his 1964 album Bringing It All Back Home. Home. These are three examples of references. Understood? So grab a glass of Heaven Store whiskey and relax as I count down my favourite references to the Minnesotan Bard in gaming. Mortal Kombat referencing Bob Dylan. Bloody hell. Where Street Fighter failed in the 8th generation of consoles, Mortal Kombat soared. Not just in the gameplay or fighting game community, but also in Bob Dylan references. In 2019's Mortal Kombat 11, Bobby D is joked about an intro dialogue between Sonya and Cassie with some good old fashioned mother daughter pre fight banter. So, how are things with you and Bob? For the last time, his name is Dylan. Why learn his name if he's not sticking around? Okay, that was actually pretty funny. Except for the part about him not sticking around. I mean, Dylan's 79, man. He's stuck around for a long time. The child of Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade shacking up with Bob Dylan. Who'd have thought it? No, seriously. Who'd have thought it? That's kind of gross, I mean, I need to get this image out of my head. That's disgusting. Next, we have the Square Enix stealth action role player, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. Within the first hour, you're allowed to freely roam the streets of Prague in the futuristic year of 2029. Head towards southeast of the Czech capital, you can find the Music Box, a store for instruments, records, and hackable loot. Real life records are alluded to with our own in-game parodies, and their collection of albums is intriguing to say the least. There's a canine version of Buddy Holly called Doggy Holly, Ray Charles as almost but not quite similar named Chuck Ray, and there's Chuck Berry as Wild Berry, among others. But the environment artist at Eidos Interactive must have a really weird taste in Bob Dylan albums, as the one album cover they chose to parody was Under the Red Sky, regarded by many as perhaps the worst Bob Dylan album and it's not even that notable in terms of artwork. It wouldn't be my pick for the worst, I'd probably go with one of these two, but the songs on this 1990 album are infamous by Dylan fans for being rather... childish. Certainly not his best work, but here it is. A similar positioned man in the American desert on a black and white background with red text above saying the artist's name. Here the artist is known as Tom Miller, which isn't the name of a session musician or anyone Dylan has worked with in the past. I did check. It's worth noting, however, Tom Miller is just two letters away from Jim Miller, who's a big character in the game. I tried face searching this man, but to no avail. And I even contacted Eidos to see if it's a dev or not, but to no reply. Sadly, you can't collect or listen to this alternate reality record, which is a shame, as I'd love to hear this dystopian future's take on Bob Dylan's Wiggle Wiggle. Home to Bob's cringiest lyrics of all time, with lines that would make Jason Derulo's Wiggle seem like Jeffrey Chaucer. Put the weapon away, please. Moving on. Bob Dylan and Lara Croft. Not the start of my next fanfiction, but the start of the next reference. And we meet the Tomb Raider franchise at a pretty muddled time. Tomb Raider Anniversary, a decent but forgettable remake overshadowed by the cultural impact of the originals and the quality of the 2010s reboot. I gained a lot of gamer clout playing this on Wii back in the day, you know, with its exclusive motion features. But as an uncultured Nintendo 10 year old, I missed out on a Bob Dylan reference as I never got to look at the game's achievement list. The PS3 version came out four years after the Wii and Xbox 360 versions and had a rather different achievement list as a result. In the Egyptian section of the game, you can back yourself a Bob Dylan reference with the bronze like a Rolling Stone trophy for killing rodents with rock. Once upon a time, dress so fine. Kill six rats with a boulder in Egypt. Didn't you? <laughs> it's a fine reference to Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone from the 1965 album Highway 61 Revisited, which is by 2021 standards his most popular song, with over 200 million streams on Spotify. So next time you hear the six minute classic, think of Lara Croft senselessly murdering giant rats for a virtual shiny thing. Next reference. 
Here's one for you Jimi Hendrix and or Guns N' Roses fans. There are lots of games that reference two of Dylan's most covered songs, Knocking on Heaven's Door and All Along the Watchtower. But chatting about an octogenarian's music career in such detail is making me feel geriatric, so I'm going to talk about the most recent reference to these songs in a bit to make me feel young again. It's Cyberpunk 2077! The current state of Cyberpunk is a bit like your dad doing his best Bob Dylan impression. It's not quite there, is it? At best it's subpar, and at times laughable. And the crooning lasts as long as the game's loading screens. On console at least. The game references the two Bob Dylan songs as job names. The first of these is the track Knocking on Heaven's Door, and the second is right at the end of the game for All Along the Watchtower. It all kinda makes sense really. I always imagined a sad Keanu meme listening to Dooma Boomer music. I just know there are more Bob Dylan, or at least Boomer Rock references hidden within this game. But as a cheapskate base model PS4 gamer, I currently can't access them. Oh well. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Guess I just have footage from these Dylan named missions to look at for now, even though whenever I see Cyberpunk running on consoles, I look like Bob Dylan's face during the recording of We Are The World. Moving on, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and Bob Dylan, and Knuckles. To use the Rabbids catchphrase, I blind love this game. The 2017 turn-based roleplayer is a game more Switch owners should play. I get that casual gamers aren't really used to strategy games, but I'm pretty dumb at games and I had little trouble with this accessible XCOM-like adventure. It's a fun time. It's always melted my heart seeing the game's devs be so proud of their work in promotion for the game, and seeing them acknowledge a Dylan reference they snuck in the game also made me smile. In the game's second world, some blustery rabbits share some nuggets of wisdom before being whisked away into the sandstorm to help Mario and friends navigate Sherbet Desert, with a play on words combining the rabbits' catchphrase with the chorus of 1963 is blowing in the wind from his second album, The Freewheeling Bob Dylan. The answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind becomes blowing in the wind. <laughs> blowing in the wind is Bob's fourth most streamed song as of recording of this video. This surprise reference gets even funnier when you imagine the rabbits actually singing the song, but alas, there's no voice acting in this game, and I'll retain a shred of dignity by not singing it. The fact that there is a Bob Dylan reference in a rabbits game is mind blowing, and in a Mario game, even more so. It's almost as surreal as that video of Bob Dylan singing the Navy SEALs copypasta. Well, they fucking you just fucking save my so, congrats, Ubisoft Milan, for creating my favourite Bob Dylan reference in a video game and also being the only Italian studio to create a Mario game, which is a bit weird when you think about it. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for accompanying me on my quest to become an amateur Dylanologist by listing my five favourite Bobby D references in gaming. Just before you dash off, shout out to the YouTuber Snickle, who helped me discover the Bob Dylan reference in Tomb Raider and letting me use their footage. I hope you learned something you didn't know when you clicked on this video, and you had a good time as well. Check out this video on Beatles references in gaming that I recently did if you fancy exploring more of my content which unites music and gaming. Take care.